Ain't got no home, I'm just a rambling round. I'm just a wandering worker, I go from town to town. Police make it hard, boys, wherever I may roam. And I ain't got no home in this world anymore. My brothers and my sisters, they are stranded on this road. A hot and dusty road that a million feet have trod. Landlord took my home. Commission is a model where um, we're hoping to expose the truth of what's happening to people in our community and our society. And like Hubert uh, alluded to so eloquently, um, the poor, people who are struggling, um, are, are basically made to be invisible in our society. And so this evening is about giving folks voice and empowering folks and hearing the truth about what's really happening um, in our communities, in our, in our city, in our society. Um, and then we're gonna, hear, we're gonna hear stories from people um, about some of the, the issues that they're dealing with, and then we're gonna have truth commissioners, which are folks in the community who are, are community leaders, who are folks who are going to be able to take a look at the issues and the stories that have been told and put them together in a way to help sort of frame some of the systemic issues and some of the human rights issues um, that have been highlighted this evening. With some of these stories you may hear, to bring us all back, I hear the baby crying in the back. We have to guarantee a future for her. In a home, in a house. We're not talking about shelters. We're talking about homes. We're, we're talking about people who may or may not have drug addictions, who may have alcohol problems. So what do we do? Mothball them, let them go under the subway. Let them just, forget them. No, no. Everybody can be resurrected. Everybody can be brought back. How do I know? Here I stand before you. I've been there. Exactly. I've done that. I think the fact that every... 14 seconds, a family goes into foreclosure in this country is a huge statistic. Right? So as we're, as we're sitting here tonight, how many families are going to go into foreclosure? And in the wake of how many banks have been bailed out? I kicked out when I was 14, 14 years old, first of all, you know what I'm saying? So I really took care of myself. I've been homeless before, but I was sleeping out of vans and stuff at the time. So the only way I did get some shelter was hang with the older people and try, you know, find somebody that let me stay there or, you know, use my charm, you know, so. <laughs> um, um, DSS sanctions you. Um, they can sanction you for like um, 30 days, 90 days, or actually, well, however long they want to, but it's, it's where they um, sanction you. And um, they won't give you benefits. So, um, so then once again, you know, you're not able to receive food stamps or um, Medicaid or, you know, cash. So it's like um, in this situation, it's like, where do you go then? Mm. I've been almost taken to jail for like sitting on the steps of a church for literally 10 seconds. I've had a SWAT team called on me for standing in front of a store. Like, I don't know, just like some really kind of strange stuff. Um, and I know tons of people who have been mistreated and harassed just for like having a backpack. I mean, you know, people get tickets for stuff like obstructing the sidewalk or leaning with intent to fall, you know, like there's all these ridiculous charges that cops can just make up just because they want, you know, just because they want to mess with somebody for whatever reasons. The policies and procedures that you know that do not work and you keep gripping and griming about them, saying they don't work, okay, but you have to enforce them because of funding. Anything, Anything. other than the traditional model of recovery, you won't try. You won't re try recovery houses, a program that's peer-led. You won't try Project Empower, a program that helps women aftercare, you know, a component that's really... Are we going to say we're sorry to people that we don't notice that most women have trauma in their lives, and that trauma has led to drug addiction? That, that trauma has led to a lot of things. And it's not that I don't own my part. It's not that I don't know that I made bad choices, okay? I know that, okay? But when is society ever going to own their part? Thank you. Because there's 72 prisons in this state and they need to fill them up. So I was one of the statistics that got locked up. Um, I had a four to 12 bid, my first time offense, uh, which was kind of harsh, I thought, but I didn't have no legal representation. I didn't have nobody to stand behind me. 
Um, so I had to take what was given to me. When I got out of prison, I was trying to do the right thing, but it's just so hard to, uh, you know, stay focused on what's right and what's wrong when you, all you know is, you know, I, I'm from the streets. You know, the streets was my home for a long time. So, you know, I know how to make the streets pay. Uh, I try to, at least, without getting caught. <laughs> but uh, I've came up on, I came up on homeless, homelessness quite a few times. Uh, I've had a lot of places help me out. I got to give a shout out to the House of Mercy. So then I ended up in um, various homeless shelters, eventually down the line. I ended up in Sojourner House, and I was the first transsexual woman ever in the history of Rochester to get into a women's shelter. But then everything kind of blew up because the staff were really supportive, but the women there really, really hated me for the most part, all of them but like two, because I was a transsexual woman. So they rushed me through the program as fast as they could, and then I got into their housing program. And now, three years, well, two and a half years later, I'm not in that program anymore, and DSS doesn't cover all my rent, and I can't find a job because I'm a transsexual woman, and um, the unemployment rates for transsexual people is about 60%, so I'm not the only one. Um, I'm, I'm a middle-class old guy, college graduate, unemployed, and I've heard this word system throughout the entire program tonight, and I believe that I think that's what this whole thing is a manifestation of the system. We're, we're seeing, it seems to me that it's a manifestation of the system that we are in. You know, and it, I was looking at the, the 23rd one, everyone has a right to work. Yeah, that's right. I have a right to work, but I'm unemployed. I have a So what I heard was a cry, a cry for something to happen drastically, a cry for us to do something with a system that is completely broken, a cry for help that is in place already, but the system will not allow them to do what they need to do because economically they can't get the funds. But I know that we are trapped within a system that is absolutely broken and forces good people to make bad decisions because they have to and they have no choice. We within the system cannot break it. We can do little tiny things to help fix it. It is really up to you, the folks on the outside, to draw the attention and the light to the fact that this system is broken and take the huge strides to fix it. The first thing is the importance of people testifying and I want to acknowledge um, the courage and boldness of these people to tell their stories um, about what they've been up to and how they survived. <laughs> these stories basically people surviving and continuing to survive against all odds. Um, and I really feel like this is the first step for us as a community is we need to hear these stories. We need to hear the actual reality of what's going on in our community and what's going on in the street because we're not going to hear it in the media. We're not going to hear from our politicians, right? We have to actually know what's going on. And this We're living in a white supremacist, heteropatriarchal, capitalist, ageist system. We need to really identify all of these, because I heard um, people plagued racism. I heard about classism, of course, in each, every, every story. I heard a lot of stories about gender-based violence, um, abuse. As Kelly talked about trauma. I heard about homophobia. I heard about um, discrimination based on age. And this is plagued through all of our institutions, every one of them. So anything we need to do, anything we're going to do to really change things as a community, we're going to have to acknowledge all of these. We're going to have to deal with all of these because this is so deeply embedded in our system. I have a $20 bill. Exactly. How many people would like to have this? Raise your hand. Okay. Really? That's all? <laughs> all hands didn't go up? Okay, so if I take it and I do this and crumple it all up into a little teeny ball, do you want it now or yes. you still want it? Okay, so if I take it and I stop on it a little bit, maybe drop it outside in the mud, would you still like it? <laughs> would you still want it then? Why? Because for whatever reason, 
We as a human race have placed the value in this piece of paper, right? That really doesn't mean anything. But we've decided it had value. This is about the fact that when we are born, as Melissa said, each one of us deserve all of these simply because we exist. No matter if we're stepped on, no matter if we're traumatized, no matter what happens in our lives, we still have value. And I ain't got no home in this world anymore. I was farming on the shares and always I was poor. My crops I laid unto the banker's store. My wife took down and died upon the cabin floor. <laughs>